Colossians chapter 1. Who delivered us from the authority of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood. You were put into the kingdom of God. You're supposed to be living here, seeking this kingdom, living it every day, promoting the kingdom, speaking the kingdom, looking at the king, listening to the king, right. everything that the king has to do and say in this kingdom, totally separated from that other one over there. But I'm telling you, if you want to release hell on earth in your life, all you need to do is be a stranger from the covenant that puts you over here. Here you are in the kingdom of darkness. Everything over here is the way you were raised. You understand this kingdom. You know you ain't worth nothing. You know you're never going to be worth nothing. And there's some guy on the top of the hill that's got everything and he hates your guts and you hate his. So let's organize and get everything he's got. After all, we got to meet our needs and he's got too much. So what are we going to do with this? Let's the three of you and me, that's four. That's more than enough. Let's go up there and take everything he's got. We strip him down to nothing, and now we divide it four and a half ways. We give him half. He don't get to eat but one and a half times a day. After all, he's been eating too much. But now, we're going to pursue and eat that up. Now, you know this system. Yeah. You understand this. I don't have to stand in and talk about it. You just sit here. Just, I, I'm not having any trouble explaining what this system over here is like. Right. Well, now the five of us have got to go get something else. Because, see, there ain't no God, so there's no increase over here. This kingdom has no increase. In fact, the God, the Lord over this kingdom is out to take everything you got away from you in order to get a fight started between you and somebody else because if he can get the strife going, there's every evil work that goes along with it. Well, now there's six of us. Now we were working up here till we got about eight or 10 of us. Man, we on a roll. The only problem is there ain't nothing left to steal. Now what we gonna do? They got some over there. Mm -hmm. Let's go over and get this. We gonna keep this up until somebody don't like it. And somebody is gonna fight back. Now you got a war. That's what started the first war in the history of mankind. The first king started the first war. Offspring of Ham and Japheth. And there you have it. Now, this is what is so sick. I've been translated into the kingdom of God. I'm over here in this kingdom. Everything belongs to me. I have access to the very throne of grace. Jesus said, blessed. He started that mighty message out there on the mountain. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And it's called Beatitude. Where did we get that? Jesus preached the blessing. That's what he was preaching. First word out of his mouth, blessed are those that are poor in spirit for theirs. Uh, the kingdom of God belongs to them. Poor in spirit, that's old English translation, and it's, it, it's confusing. It literally, what they were trying to say is, a man that's poor in spirit is one that knows he's got to depend on God for everything. And it's translated, go to like uh, contemporary English uh, translate, it, and it translates it cl closer to being uh, correct in the light of the blessing itself. And it says, blessed are those who depend on God solely for everything. For the kingdom of God belongs to them. Amen. See, the whole kingdom belongs to you. Jesus said, fear not, little flock. It gives your father great pleasure to give you the kingdom. You own this place. 
You ain't having to beg anybody for anything. And there's more than enough over here. We could use it all up and can't find any way to use up the blessing. And the connection is the tithe. Oh, what a deal God set up for us. Man, alive. You bring me what's mine, he said. And he gave to you what's his so you could bring it back. Do you remember when you were a little guy, like I was in church, my daddy would say, now, boy, now, here, now, this is yours, but now you, you don't, don't spend this. You need to put it in the offering. He's giving me, he's teaching me. See? Teaching me how to give. Well, he gave me the money. I didn't earn that money. He gave it to me. You didn't earn that money. God gave it to you. Amen. He gave it to you so you can bring it to him. And he said, if you'll return to me what's mine, I'll return to you what's, what's yours. Yours is the blessing. I'll pour out the blessing, yes. quote, which belongs to you. Yes. And portions you ain't find any way to use and so big you can't contain it. That's over here in the kingdom. But the sad part of this, you're over here in the kingdom living like an alien. I don't belong here. You're still living out the kingdom of darkness and its rules over here in the kingdom of heaven. Wow, how sad. You were born to be free. I'm not talking about when you're born of your mama. I'm talking about when you were born of your father. Oh, born again not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. I tell you, don't, don't, don't yield to your natural physical DNA. It'll try to follow the course your parents went. It'll try to cause your body to die the same time they died. I noticed mine started going downhill when I reached my 70s because my, I've, I'm, the bloodline of my mother and that family's background is, is stronger in me than my father's side, and, and I, was, I was headed towards the time when most of my kinfolks on that side, their, their bodies quit in their mid to late 70s. I just crossed 69 or 70. I noticed my body started going in that direction. Well, I didn't, I didn't, of course, I didn't like it, but I didn't realize what was going on because what I had normally done over the years to take the thought and take the word of God, take, put it in my thought and say it, believe it, stand on it, receive my healing and go on. But it was working more slowly than it had before. And I, God woke me up that I ought to be living 120 years, not no 75 or 76 years. And, when, and, and he said to me, he said to me several years ago, he said, that's just as much my word as by my stripes you were healed. Now, what are you going to do with it? Well, I didn't want to stay here no 120 years. <laughs> there are times you get, like the Apostle Paul, you get thinking, boy, let's get this over with. Dear God, <laughs> let's get out of here. But when I grabbed hold of that and stood on it, I noticed it started changing things where my body was concerned because I began to confess that 120 years Amen. and believe in God, I'm, I'm, I got I to have this body for 40 years. 45, 46 more years. And, and so it, and I heard the Lord say this one afternoon. Now, you know what you've done? I said, uh, well, a little. <laughs> he said, your physical body was following the pattern of your ancestors and their physical DNA. He said, by my word seed in you, your spirit man has my DNA. Yes. Your spirit man is eternity. Yes. He said, when you got over on my word concerning that, he said you, that your spirit man then rescued your body, picked it up, now, he said, you're going to have to stand fast in that liberty. You're going to have to stand on the word of God. You're going to have, now that you know the truth and the truth made you free from that, yes. but you're going to have to stand for it because yes. Satan will come try to take it away from you. And he has, he's tried to. Amen. 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 I'm going to take my blessing away from you. No, ma'am. No, sir. He has delivered you from the power of darkness, the authority of darkness. 
and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, I said all that to tell you this. This is where we're going this week as the Lord leads. And I heard this this morning. And God is going to reveal and develop things to us and through us and in us. Oh, Lord God. There's enough of us in here just this morning to affect this planet and hit the kingdom of darkness so hard that it'll never, ever recover. Brother Jim Hilton brought me his new book the other day, and I began to read that, and I no more than got into, I never got through the first few pages till it just, man, alive. God just opened my eyes to what, what he was saying. Here's an element of this that, that I hadn't seen, I hadn't touched. I knew that Jesus came preaching the blessing. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes and all of them came preaching the law and its curse. Jesus came preaching, blessed are those, blessed are those. And, and the apostle Peter then preached right after his resurrection. He said, you are the sons of the prophets and Jesus came to, God sent Jesus to bless you. He sent Jesus to say, be fruitful and multiply. He sent Jesus to put that blessing on you. They'd talk themselves out of it. They didn't have a clue. And then he led them out to that ascension place. And while he was being lifted, the blessing. See, here's what you have to understand. It was the power of that blessing that did the healing. He said, it's the Father within me. He does the works. It was the power of the blessing that did the healing. It was the power of the blessing that raised people from the dead. It was the power of the blessing that raised up him. It was the power of the blessing that did all those miracles. And it was the power of the blessing that lifted him up. And as he was lifted up, leaving their sight, the scripture said, and he blessed them. Well, he already said, I only say what I heard my father say, and I only do what I see my father do. So you know what he said to him. Right. Now compare, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it. Compare that to go into all the world. Go in, not, he wasn't talking about the earth. Of course it has to do with the earth. But he said, go into all of that Babylonian choked down system world that's trying to meet their needs without me. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. My God, brother, we just found out what the gospel is. That through Abraham, all the world would be blessed. And that's him headed up. That's him going. Go to all the world and preach this blessing. Make disciples out of them. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Stand with me, please. Let's receive it. How do you receive the word anointed preached? There's a, way, there, there's a specific way to do that. Now granted it got twisted up and all balled up in natural ideas and it had been abused and all that. Nonetheless, that doesn't take away from the fact that the word states it. In Galatians 5. Let him that's taught in the word respond by sowing in behalf of what you just heard. Now you remember Jesus said, Satan cometh immediately 
to steal the word. They heard it with gladness like you did this morning. But he comes to steal it. They had no root in themselves. And so they got offended and he was able then to break in and take the word. Why? The word had no root. How, how, do, you, how do you set that root system? How do you set it into work? Let him that is taught in the word respond or communicate with him that taught sowing not to your flesh but sowing to the spirit that you may reap life everlasting. That you may reap zoe, the very life and essence of God himself. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked for whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. When you respond to that, oh, you, and you're saying, oh, thank you, Jesus, for I, what I got in, in here today. I, I receive it. I don't want to be an alien in the kingdom of God. The kingdom's operating here. Well, the kingdom is the kingdom. You ought to be living and operating in it. Jesus said, if you seek this kingdom, you don't even have, you, you, you don't even have to think about what you eat, what you wear, all the needs that all them people out there are fighting about. You've been separated from that kingdom. That ain't even where you get your stuff. Now, if that's the way you're going to get your stuff, then you're acting like an alien to this kingdom. Well, why then do you think other parts of the kingdom would operate in your presence, like healing, deliverance, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, all the gifts of the Spirit, all of that's kingdom stuff. Oh, the kingdom is at hand. Everything hangs on love. Without love, everything else fails. Love is our command, and faith won't work without it. Start walking in love today with Limitless Love, a 365-day devotional. For 45 years, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have walked in victory. Love is the foundation of their relationship with God and also with others, and it has yielded winning results. Now you too can embark on the same path of victory this year. Limitless Love contains word-based foundational teaching to establish you in receiving and giving God's love. It's a daily guide designed to help you live satisfying days without fear, limits, and failure. You have mountains to move, places to go, and dreams to fulfill. Live love and experience the rest. With this power plan to pursue love, there's no reason you won't experience your greatest year ever. Order Limitless Love, a 365-day devotional by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, available for just $16.95. This new devotional is a daily guide to walk you through limitless love all year long. For an additional product discount and 48-hour processing, place your order online. To order by phone, call 800-600-7395. For more ministry resources available to you from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, go to kcm.org. They say opposites attract. Well, he's like fire and I'm the gasoline. So <laughs> it's been intense <laughs> at times, <laughs> uh, what we've overcome in a young marriage. I believe I could conquer anything from the time that I was two years old until I can remember if I knew that if I set my mind to it, that it, I believed, and I believed it could be done. I come from you know, generational dysfunction where the women were, the pants and Jason come where the women were very uh, downplayed and not important. So we have truly had to decide as a step of faith not to model our marriage after what we've come out of, but have had to innocently delve into the word together. We never fit the mold, ever. Everything's gonna be hardcore 100 mile an hour, right? So our, our relationship with Jesus was going to be zero to 60, no holds barred, we were going to do what the Word said. So we started. I don't believe it was in Jason's heart, the whole picture of tithing at that part. part. So I just sat down with our $14 an hour and 
one baby and one on the way shortly after and said, Lord, I giving all my money away. That's what I thought I, I she was doing. And he, and he, you know, he never, he never argued with me ever. Um, I, I give it, but there was definitely pride operating there lots and through both of our parts. And we just started to do what the word said and what um, Brother Copeland and Sister Gloria told us to start doing. And we instantly started to see God moving in our life. We sat with our kids and said, we're going to build this business together. Might not um, see dad so much for a little bit. Might not see dad so much for a while. We might not have so many holidays. We grease valves. There's valves everywhere. You need to shut pipelines in. You need to close off and transfer oil one way or, or gas another way. Every valve has a grease nipples on it. Just like in your truck, they have moving parts inside. And all we have high pressure pumps that come in and we, we grease those valves. We go every year. So it's not something that you do once and the work is gone. It's, it's maintenance that you should be doing yearly and things like that. Once, so once you get a customer and they're you're happy. good to them and they're happy, you generally go back to that place every year. So it's it's revolving. So as your clientele grows, that's how you add units to your fleet because you really don't have any more room for another another customer. So you build another truck, you get more customers, and then the amount gets full. So I'm telling you, because we were obedient and give it to him, we went from, like I said, two welders deciding they're going to start a construction company. Huh? To 60 employees. To 60 employees. In a, two days. In two days. They, we're, because favor of God is on us. In the first year and a half of our company, we're doing, we said three years. You know how you do that? You give God a number. Never give God a number. We said the first three years in nine months of starting our company. Not right. under the Nine hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and then at the year to date, at the at that fiscal year end mark, we went to one point two. I would say that I'm in covenant relationship with Kenneth and Gloria. I think we both would say that as far as our hearts and the ministry of KCM and partnering with them, seeing those clips of what we're doing in the world. I am KCM. We are. Seeing what we're doing and having a tangible, something to, you know, to take home and show our, our guys that work for us too, that's partnership. Like I was weeping, like it is ours. We did that. We did that together with what we, what we sow. The biggest evidence that I love looking at is their family, you know. Um, just they're so real of what they've walked through as a family. They're precious. Every word and revelation that him or Gloria or anybody in the ministry gets, it's precious, it's nuggets, it's anchor. It's an anchor, like the word. I, I just want to say that they have taught, Jason and I, that we are the righteousness of our Father. We are set apart. We are a sweet fragrance. We are free from the curse of the law. We are the blessing. We are the blessing. The fruit of the land must yield its increase to us. We produce peace in our home, and we are healed and prosperous in Jesus' name. I know you've enjoyed this message today from my grandfather, Brother Kenneth Copeland, and what he mentioned in this broadcast was out of Galatians 6, 6, where the Bible says, let him that is taught in the word respond by sowing in behalf of what you've just heard. And the revelation, which is that, that's what it is, anything out of the word of God that you see that comes to life, that's revelation. And the revelation of tithing brought a change into Jason and Lacey Kennedy's finances. You've seen that. And you too can have a breakthrough in your finances, but it comes from the Word of God. And it gives your Father great pleasure, the Bible says, to give you the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. When you sow into God, you sow spiritually. The Bible's very clear, you, very clear excuse me, you will reap a harvest from Him. And He is so good and He is so faithful. That's why on today's broadcast, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to give to you this little mini book called The Plan That Never Fails by Kenneth Copeland. And you and I both know that there is a plan for everything. There's a plan for your house, a retirement plan, political plans, health care plans, financial plans. But what you need above all those others is the plan from God. And once you know how to think and act based on that plan, based on the Word of God, that's when you experience 
that's true and real success, not just in one or two areas, but in every area of your life. So start today by getting on God's plan, and this will be a great help to you. Uh, request yours, we'll get it to you, or you can download this little mini book from our website at KCM. Dot org. So make sure you're getting these things into your life. If you've missed any of these broadcasts all throughout the week or these Sunday broadcasts, everything is available to you at kcm.org. A lot of study materials there. Uh, if you want to study anything specifically, you can search it. It's a great tool for you at hand to just go and saturate yourself in the things of God, finding out what the Word of God has already said about your situation. And that's what's important. And when it's time to get on God's plan, you've got to know God's thoughts and His thoughts are in His Word. So whatever you've got to do to get a hold of these things and make them a part of your life, do that. Make God's Word the priority for yourself, for your life, for your family. Today, every day, all year long, for the rest of your life, God's Word is true and it is good. Amen. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you that God loves you and we love you. And like Kenneth and Gloria Copeland always say, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For a copy of today's broadcast, visit us online at kcm.org or call or write to us today. Remember to request your free book, The Plan That Never Fails by Kenneth Copeland. God has a plan for your life filled with the blessing. For faster processing, go to kcm.org and request your free copy. You can receive it as a mini book or download it from our website. For the mini book version, one per household, please. Offer good for 30 days. He has called us to be free and be blessed and walk in the power and the outpouring of that blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The Branson Victory Campaign, March 8th through the 10th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. Living Victory West Coast Faith Encounter, Anaheim, California, April 6th and 7th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Celebrate 30 years in Europe at the Europe Victory Campaign, May 10th through 12th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Excel Center in London, UK. Living Victory Pacific Rim Faith Encounter, Honolulu, Hawaii, June 15th and 16th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. The Southwest Believers Convention, July 2nd through 7th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information on these and other events, go to events.kcm.org. Next Sunday on the Believer's Voice of Victory. It's God's will to exalt you. What He don't want is you trying to exalt yourself. He said, cast the whole of your care over on Him and He exalts you in due time.